Hi, my name is Dale Brethauer. I've been trading stocks for about 30 years. I do this for a living. I am a professional. I also have a passion for teaching, coaching, and mentoring individuals that want to learn how to trade stocks. There are two approaches that I use to teach my mentees. Both are very highly profitable. Both have a positive expectation. The first strategy involves using a, a portfolio of financially strong stocks. I work for DuPont, and I, I was a mechanical engineer, went and got my MBA, migrated into the world of finance. I know how to pick a financially strong corporation. That's the fundamental side. I want a portfolio of financially strong stocks. Why? They outperform the market. They have outperformed the market for the last 40 years. This is the basis for the portfolio. The second thing I teach is a, a proprietary indicator that I've developed that, that tells me when to entry and exit from a trade. The second strategy relies on the, the uh, theta decay in the last month of options as they get close to expiration. This decay, there's, there's two things that make up the price of an option. There's the actual intrinsic value, and then there is the time value. That time value decays very rapidly in the last month. By selling these options in, in strategies like iron condors or butterflies or calendar spreads, you can profit from this time decay. These two strategies are very powerful. They have a positive expectation. However, that's only part of trading. I work a lot with my mentees about the psychology of trading. Let me give you two examples. Dr. Van Tharp, who is a world-renowned psychologist, does a seminar where he takes individuals within the seminar and he runs a game. In the game, he's got a fishbowl. The fishbowl has 60 white ping pong balls, 40 black ping pong balls. What he does is he asks the students to take a ping pong ball. If, if it's white, that's a winner. If it's black, that is a loser. That is a positive expectation game. Now, when he does this for a number of times, and he's taught this to thousands of people over the years, what do you think the results are? 100% of the people should show a profit. The rules are they can invest anything they want on the pick of a ping pong ball. And they, can, they have about 50 chances to do this. The results are one third go bankrupt one-third lose money, and only one-third make money. This is a positive expectancy game. 100% of the people should make money. If you pulled the ball out 100 times and put a dollar every time, 60 times, statistically 60 times you should win a dollar, 40 times you would lose a dollar, or $20 at the end of $100. The other thing I want to talk about is, is uh, Richard Dennis. Richard Dennis was a very good uh, futures trader back in the 70s. He actually got together about 20 people and taught them exactly how he trades. You would think that if you found out exactly how Richard Dennis trades, that you would make a profit. After a year, there was only one of the 20 that was profitable. This brings in the psychology of trading. There, the psycho, your psychological state of mind has to be positive. There are four things you want to look at. One, are you exposing yourself to too much risk? Two, do you have unrealistic expectations? Three, 
you, do you have a lack of confidence? And four, you need a trading plan. Let's go back. On the first one, if you're exposing yourself to too much risk, most professionals only expose themselves to about 1% risk on any given trade. Not all trades are going to be profitable. And losing is part of this game. You want to make it set up so that when you have a losing string, which inevitably you will have, you do not take a great hit in your portfolio. Most people, when they first start out, see, see the, the potential for this and put great, a great deal of, of their portfolio on a trade. And if they have a losing string, they lose it, they're done. We want to avoid that. The second thing is unrealistic expectations. A lot of people look at the Wall Street Journal and say, wow, what a game. I'm going to take $1,000 that I have extra, and I'm going to make a million dollars next year. That's very unrealistic. Sure, it could happen, but, but realistic expectations from the stock market are more around 30 50% a year. I currently am running a nightly blog where I've taken a challenge and every night I put on the trades that I'm going to put on the very next day. All my mentees have access to this. I've been doing this for six months. Currently, after six months, I'm up 36%. That's an annualized at 72% per year. That is a realistic expectation. Would I expect my new mentees to get that kind of expectation? No, because it's going to take time for them to learn the strategies and feel comfortable with the process and do it time and time again. They're going to make mistakes. Now, along the, along the way, if you have a strategy that, that, that you know when to put the trades in, when to take them out, you know that you're going to have some losers. Losers is part of the game. And when you have a string of losers, you will not lose your confidence. You'll have confidence because all of a sudden you'll be making some money in your portfolio. Now how do we put this all together? The last thing we want to do is we want to put together a trading plan. And I will talk about that a little bit later. Now the trading plan is you have to treat this like a business. It's not a hobby. If you want to be a success in the stock market, you need to treat this like a business. There are two reasons why small businesses go out of, out of business early. One, they're undercapitalized. And two, they do not have a trading plan or they don't have a business plan. I help my mentees to develop that business plan. There are three things that we focus on. One, what are the goals? What are your goals with this trading? Do you want to continue to make a living? Are you retired? Do you want to supplement your income? What are your goals? I also talk about a book that was written by Napoleon Hill. Napoleon, in the book uh, written by Napoleon Hill, he says, you are what you think. It's bet best to write down your goals and to every day uh, say them out loud, program your brain in a positive fashion how you want to obtain these goals. Positive thinking, that's one of the first things. The second thing in the trading plan is the rules. How are you going to run your business? When are you going to get into a trade? When are you going to get out of a trade? And you want to have this set up so that you do it time and time again until it becomes boring. When it becomes boring, you've made it. The last thing is risk control. And you do that by establishing, first of all, the percent of risk you want to take. And second, you apply that to every trade. Every trade has got the same amount on it. Let me give you an example. If you had a $10,000 portfolio and you only wanted to risk 1%, that would mean you only have $100 to risk. Now, that's not what you're going to put on your trade. You're going to take the $100, and I know that my strategies, when they have a loser, the max they're going to lose is about 25%. That's the $100. 
So I can put on a trade that's actually 100 divided by the 25% or $400. That's an average size for an option contract. And I do that all the time. So the three things again were to establish your goals, to, to, to have your rules, entry and exit, and do them all the time. And the last is to have your risk management. Now I'd like to finalize by talking about the importance of having a mentor. All professional athletes have a coach, a mentor that's brought them along. And an example I want to use is Tiger Woods. And I'm sorry about the situation he's in right now, but Tiger Woods learned from age three until he became the best golfer in the world how to do that because he was coached, he was mentored, and he spent thousands of hours hitting golf balls to become a professional, to become the best in the world. That's the psychological side of it. Once he trained his body how to hit the ball, he needed to train his mind that he could do that. Now, recently what's happened is he's lost his focus because of his personal problems. That focus has caused a lapse in the psychology of his game and dropped him from number one to the point now where he hasn't won in a long time. My job is to make you a success. This is what I do. I have a passion for this. Please join me.